Hi, I'm Ed. Um, I'm a vet from Wiltshire. I work um, mostly with cows and a bit with sheep. Um, and uh, it, it's slightly out of my comfort zone here today, perhaps. Um, but I, I just like to try and reposition vets maybe as advisors who can help you uh, to maximise your welfare and to um, reduce your use of antibiotics rather than uh, the, the, I think the trap that we've perhaps fallen into as a profession is that we've, we've been seen as a, a location from which to purchase antibiotics and, and we're often viewed as, as medicine salesmen. Um, so I'm just going to run through um, uh, a couple of scenarios for, for, for cattle and for sheep uh, which should be applicable to all systems. Um, if, if you happen to farm pigs or chickens the same process applies um, uh, my expertise isn't in that area, but I'm, I'm sure I could help if you've got some questions. So, my, my first point really is, in order to reduce your antibiotic usage, you have to work down the flow chart, not up. Low antibiotic usage starts with high welfare, that feeds into better health, and then you end up with lower antibiotic use. If you, if you start from the position of wishing to lower your antibiotic use, and you simply stop using them or attempt to replace them with other remedies, then uh, you're not likely to uh, have success. There is still a place for antibiotics in livestock agriculture, um, and where antibiotics are truly necessary from an animal welfare point of view, prompt and appropriate use can lead to uh, a, a reduced usage, because um, otherwise you can end up with recurrence, of disease or, or spread of disease within a group. Um, so there are um, contracts available now, such as Claire was talking about, where uh, the, the, the cows which you uh, are producing milk for sale cannot have received antibiotics. Um, it, it would be wrong to say that the whole farm would have a zero antibiotic use. Uh, every farm um, of above a certain size is likely to require some antibiotics uh, in order to uh, treat sick animals at some point in time. Our main focus is making sure that we use them as little as possible and as often as necessary. So um, just a, an idea of where to start then uh, is it, it, to try and do it systematically. Where are you using antibiotics currently? Um, and therefore you can then go through the systems as, as to how you can approach the reduction in their use. And the best place to start this is a health review, which you can do on your own, or, or hopefully in conjunction with, with a, a veterinary advisor, um, because we, we are certainly not experts on farming, but, but we are pretty good at discussing the various aspects of animal health um, and can work with you on your individual farm to work out how, how best to reduce your usage in each area. Um, and Red Tractor have been brilliant in, in the last few years in really uh, pushing a health and performance review and now and also an antibiotic usage review um, to right at the top of the agenda. Um, and, and so undertaking an antibiotic audit is part of your annual review process. That is simply what have you used in the last 12 months, in which groups of animals, uh, what diseases were treated and, and also looking at antibiotics by class just to make sure that when you do use them you're not using antibiotics which are considered critically important for human health. Um, so first of all we'll just look at a, a cattle example. Apologies if you can't see the smaller text. Um, it, it's not actually especially important. Uh, it's just giving an example of what uh, an annual review might look like. Uh, you may have treated a proportion of cows for fertility and calving related conditions. You may have treated young stock, usually primarily pneumonia and uh, diarrhea. Uh, lameness uh, is uh, a, a fairly major user of, of antibiotics in cattle, although probably it shouldn't be. And mastitis is a really significant contributor to antibiotic use on most farms. Um, so you, you can categorize your usage by which, which area of disease um, that you've been treating and you can use an antibiotic calculator to quantify your use. Uh, this is freely available from AHDB, the levy body. Uh, you can download it from that um, link that you see there. 
uh, in which you can either get your vet to do it for you or yourself just simply ask your vet for a list of what has been prescribed in the previous 12 months, put them into this calculator alongside um, the numbers of cows and the numbers of young stock that you have, and it will give you a calculation uh, on the three metrics by which we currently measure antibiotic use. Now, the, the most commonly used one in the media is, is milligrams uh, per population, um, which is that, that top figure, um, and that, that was what was used in the O'Neill report. Um, but sometimes we can also look at um, uh, treatments by uh, daily doses or by course doses, so the number of courses of treatment that animals have, have received. And, and that information can tell us something in itself. For pigs and chickens, there's an e-medicines book with, with the same sort of format. Um, this will also tell you, in terms of the milligrams usage, uh, what, by what route you've been using your treatments. Um, and uh, you can see here, this would be a, a fairly typical profile. Injectable treatments where you're treating the whole animal tend to use more grams of antibiotic than uh, ones such as intramammary tubes where you're just treating a local area. And the, the use of uh, antibiotic foot bath is completely inappropriate and uses a huge number of grams of antibiotic for a, a very ineffective means of treatment. So if we just look at each area of usage, uh, we can just highlight um, in, in quite a generic way really how we might address that. But obviously this would be specific to your farm. So first of all, udder health. Do we know what bugs cause mastitis on your farm and is there evidence for antibiotic use for those? The, the latest evidence for E. coli, for example, is that there is no benefit to using antibiotics for treating mastitis resulting from E. coli compared to simply supportive treatment. Uh, whereas some of the other uh, streps and stats that would cause mastitis, then, then we could justify it in certain situations. Um, so we should stop using systemic treatments for uh, mastitis, so that's why you're giving an injection at the same time as, a, as an intramammary tube, and by, by doing that you've immediately halved your antibiotic use. Um, you can reduce the rate of mastitis that you suffer from on your farm by implementing uh, a, a control plan, and the, the industry standard one would be the AHDB mastitis control plan, uh, which has been proven across thousands of herds to, to reduce the rate when it's been implemented properly. And lastly, uh, a, a major use of antibiotics in the dairy industry has been blanket dry cow therapy um, over the course of the last 40 years or so and now there's uh, very strong evidence that that's not a good idea so only using dry cow therapy uh, on, on cows which really need it would be another means of reducing your usage. Secondly then, lameness. We need to reduce the development of new cases through uh, an appropriate Risk assessment, where is your lameness coming from? Is there an aspect of your management or the environment that is driving your lameness? Prompt detection and treatment. There's a rather depressing statistic, but on average it takes nearly 60 days from the onset of lameness for a cow to get treated for that lameness. And the, the longer that the time goes on, the less likely she is to cure. Uh, and for the vast majority of cases of lameness, it is not an infectious cause. Therefore, antibiotics would not be an appropriate treatment and they are never appropriate in a foot bath, which has been used uh, to control digital dermatitis, which is an infectious cause of lameness, uh, but there are many non-antibiotic alternatives which you can use for group treatment, and, and uh, clinical cases should be treated topically. Again, you can use non-antibiotic treatments very successfully, and, and really addressing the changes to the environment that are necessary to reduce the infection pressure would be your main focus. Young stock, uh, not such a significant contributor in terms of milligrams of usage, just because they're smaller, but in terms of the number of courses of treatment, they can be very, very significant. Um, in some herds, almost every calf would be treated for pneumonia at some point during its life. In some herds, almost every calf would be given some treatment for diarrhea at some point during its life. And again, there, there's a, a really good industry standard uh, five-point plan that you can work through to try and avoid it if that is the case on your farm. Uh, it's, uh, again, you may not be able to see the, uh, the, the writing, but it splits into the five areas that you need to focus on. Firstly, what Claire was talking about, setting goals and measuring. So 
you, you need to know that the, um, the colostrum is transferring immunity correctly to the calf. You need to know that the calf is eating enough at the point of weaning that it's not going to have a setback. You need to know that they're growing fast enough. You need to know what your age at first calving is. And you need to make sure that when those heifers are calving in, that they are recalving at three years old. Uh, we've heard a lot today about carbon footprint and um, that, that can be something that has a really significant effect. And then following through then, good colostrum, good nutrition, a low infection pressure, so that's how you group your animals and making sure that you're not putting mixed ages and sick calves in with healthy calves, and a healthy environment, so low humidity um, and uh, good levels of hygiene, as, as many of Claire's slides have, have demonstrated. Fertility and cow calving health, hideously complicated, everything is interconnected. You look at that slide and think, my goodness me, you never make any sense of that. But also, it's super simple. If cows are the right body condition score, and you feed them right, and you don't use a silly bull, you'll be fine. So, uh, if you're using a lot of antibiotics around the point of calving, then you just need to go back to those simple processes. And Claire has also spoken a bit about the, the, the underlying uh, considerations for health. This is the, the cow signals diamond. On any farm, you can just check to see do they have enough space, feed, water, light, air, and rest. If they do, you're likely to have good health. And all of those things can generally be achieved outside more successfully than they can inside. So maximizing the amount of time that you can graze your cows is likely to help. Underlying disease would be the last point, um, but I, I shall run over time if I talk too much about that. Uh, a sheep example, there are three main areas of use, lameness, watery mouth and joint ill in lambs, and, and abortion. Again, there's a five-point plan for reducing lameness in sheep, which is, is brilliant. It's, uh, again, your vet can help you work through that, it works on a, on a questionnaire basis. Quarantine, uh, any bought-in animals, culling recurrent offenders, appropriate vaccination, and avoiding spreading infection around on the farm through inappropriate foot trimming or, uh, or poor hygiene. Watery mouth and joint ill, there's been a great campaign um, from Colostrum is Gold. Um, if, you, if you look up that uh, on Google, you'll find heaps of information about how to maximise your lambing success based on protect, plan and prevent. So protect by ensuring good health of your ewes, and good nutrition of your ewes to make sure that their colostrum and their milk production is exactly as it should be. Planning so that when the lambs hit the ground then everyone knows what's happening and they're looked after properly. And prevention in terms of setting up your infrastructure um, for good hygiene, enough shelter uh, and every member of staff that knows exactly what's going on. And abortion is still very, very widespread despite there being very effective vaccines available. Enzootic abortion is still causing 35% of all sheep abortions in the UK. Um, and some herds are simply using blanket um, oxytetracycline therapy as a means of dealing with that rather than actually preventing it through appropriate husbandry and, and uh, vaccination where necessary. So just to wrap up, um, these are the key points, which are basically exactly the same as Claire's, which is if you, if you, use, the, if you use the leaky bucket scenario, uh, it, it's, it's an awful lot more effective to turn off the tap going into the bucket than it is to try and patch up the holes in the bottom of it. If we establish what the main causes are on the farm for disease, mortality and antibiotic use, and then systematically address those causes to maximise natural immunity, and minimise stress, then we won't be spending time patching up those holes with antibiotics. Thank you.